Hey, how's it going, man? It's bad, how are you? What do we have here? It's a solar ray therapeutic apparatus. It's a little small for a tanning machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've come to the pawn shop today to try and sell my solar therapeutic apparatus. I bought this at a yard sale for 10 bucks. Looked like something I could make a buck on. So I'm hoping to get a few hundred bucks out of it. So you know anything about it at all? No. Uh, it says it cures approximately 1,000 different kinds of sickness, maladies, and disease, or injuries, etc. Well, I think it's like medical quackery. It's a machine that's supposed to cure every illness. Back at the time when this thing was made, it was legal to say just about anything about your product. And there were some machines out there with claims from weight loss to telepathy. But most of them, like this one, did nothing at all. And there'd be testimonials and everything else. I mean, I love some of these things. Look, look here, right here. Man, 65 years old, roundworm. After applying my system eight to 10 times, large bunches of worms discharged. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sounds like it did miracles. <laughs> miracles of making money. Whoever marketed this thing was probably a genius. I mean, people bought these things because people were gullible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have bought one. This is basically just a big magnifying glass, and it really seems funny that people would think it did anything else back then. But ideas like this are still around today. Take a look at the back of any magazine. There's ads that promise to grow hair or enlarge certain body parts. <laughs> it's all the same idea. How the hell does this thing work? According to the instructions here, this would fold out and there was some sort of like curtain around it. I guess this would help move it around to the right position and it bolted onto the stand right here. You hung it in the window, it filtered out the bad rays from the sun and it directed the good rays to the afflicted area. I'd like to point it at the anthill. <laughs> This thing is so fun and so cool, I'll have no problem selling it. It's weird, it's unique, and collectors go nuts for this kind of stuff. As usual, it comes down to price. And if I can get this thing for 100 bucks, I'll probably double my money on it. So what do you want to do with this thing? Well, I'd just like to sell it. Really like to get it out of my garage and into somebody else's. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 100 bucks for it. Take 150 if you want to give it to me. No, 100 bucks. So I don't think anybody else is going to buy it off you. <laughs> Well, 100 bucks is better than nothing. I guess 100 bucks. All right, 100 bucks, man. Hey, Chumley, go write them up on this stuff. I only paid 10, so I'm pretty happy with what I got. It's $100 in my pocket that I didn't have when I walked in the door. Hey, what do we got here? We have a 1920s radium crock. <laughs> OK. Back in the 1920s, they would put radium in this with water, and it has a little centrifuge that would spin around. You turn this and turn it on. And then you just uh, made yourself a delicious radium cocktail. <laughs> I got the croc from a friend of mine. It's a really interesting piece and I'm hoping to be able to sell it. I want to sell the croc for $900. It was thought to cure cancer, high blood pressure, and even thought to increase the sex libido. This is really interesting. Radium releases alpha particles, which are really, really super dangerous, but it's hard for them to penetrate things. It's, they're not like x-rays. So some of these things, probably no radium ever got in the water because it got absorbed by the metal. And then there was other ones where you could buy packets of radium and just pour it in the water, which was just like, oh my god, I don't see how you didn't die from the first drink. Right. But. By the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, they began to realize this radioactive stuff is really, really dangerous. People have been coming up with these quack medicine things ever since they invented money. But finally, in 1938, the federal government came along and said, enough is enough. If you're going to make a medical claim, it's got to be real, and they outlawed things like this. How much you want for it? $900. OK. I'll go 400. How about a 450? I will go four and a quarter. It's a limited market. It's going to sit for a while. All right, sold. Sweet. Awesome. The nerdness in me just loves this thing, though. Okay, let's let's go do some paper. All right. 
I'm gonna spend the 425 uh, on helping my friend out. He's a little short on cash, and so we're gonna help a friend out. What do we got here? An 1854 electroshock therapy machine. Oh, something we can use to make chum normal. I am normal. Ow! I came to the pawn shop today to sell my 1854 electroshock therapy machine. I would not want to sell it for anything less than 100 bucks. You know, as crazy as this device is, I'm pretty sure that people are going to look back to our modern devices and think it's just as crazy. So how'd you get this? It belonged to my grandmother's great-grandfather. He was a horse cancer. So he got caught paying some kids to let the horses and cattle out at night. Oh, wow. They decided for treatment, they would apply electroshock therapy to him. <laughs> well, that's, that's a little strange, man. So how exactly does this thing work? Well, you turn the crank. Engage this magnet to this magnet. The crank turns the wheel, turns the coils. Electricity comes out the brass knobs, goes to the electrodes, voila. So have you ever tried it? Doesn't really work anymore, but I prefer to remain crazy anyways. <laughs> a lot of people remember Jack Nicholson getting shocked and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. But today, shock therapy is a little more civilized and a lot less painful. This is from, where, 1854? 1854. This comes from a time where Anything from gonorrhea to headaches, they would strap this on you and claim that it would fix it. You know, it was total quackery, and it didn't even produce enough volts other than enough to piss you off and hurt you. They used it on your great-grandfather as a torture device. They weren't fixing anybody with it. Yeah. Any idea of what you want to get out of it? 250 bucks. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 100 bucks for it. It might be medical quackery, but it's still a piece of history. How about 175? How about 125? I mean, don't you think there's a, lot, there's a market for this? It's not really the market I like to deal with. People that collect the stuff are generally kind of weird. <laughs> can you go 150? 125 is the most I can do. Man. All right, 125. All right, deal. Chum, you want to write him up? Yep. You know, having a crazy grandfather has gotten me $125 richer. You know, I can take my friends out for some drinks tonight and tell them stories about my grandfather. Hey, uh, what do we have here? This is a uh, radio vision machine. A radio vision machine? I love those things. This is Pinky now? Why isn't Pinky wearing her polo shirt? She spilled some lunch on it. You have a yeah. customer in front of you. I acquired my Radiox instrument back home in Los Angeles at an antique shop. If, uh, if I'm able to make a sale today, I would buy a car, definitely. Yes, this is a radio vision machine. Do you know much about it? I know that it was created and invented by uh, Dr. Ruth Drown back in the 30s, I believe. And uh, this actually, in particular, takes photographs of internal organs. So this is medical quackery? Dr. Ruth, whatever her name was, she made very, very questionable medical devices. And she basically sold them to shady doctors. I love when items like this come in the shop. They're weird. What this machine did was create a false diagnosis so that a doctor could keep on treating you and treating you and keep on getting money out of you. The way this whole system worked, there was a cartridge that went back here. You would put film in it. They would take your blood and they would put it on blotter paper. And then they would put it in here, adjust all these different dials depending on your height, your weight, any other stupid thing they could come up with. And then they would flick the switch. Do they have a setting for five pounds? The amazing thing was, when you look in the back, see all the dials? They're not connected to anything. <laughs> The lady who invented it knew it was BS. The doctors that dealt with them knew it was BS because look at it. <laughs> so it really never did anything, but there is a collector's market for these things. How much do you want for it? Essentially, I would, I would like three grand for it. OK. They're really, really neat, but there's a lot of them out there. They generally go for like 300 bucks. I give you 150. Nah, I probably wouldn't take that. Yeah, no problem. I'll probably hold on to it then. OK. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Pinky wanted you to make a deal. Me and Pinky are going to lunch, Rick. Didn't you already go to lunch? Yeah, but Pinky didn't. I was looking to sell this today. It is a Master Violet Ray number 11. OK. What and is it? Some people call it a medical quack kit. Some people actually thought it would like help to heal people, headaches. 
baldness. We should try that out. I came down to the pawn shop today to sell my Master Violet Ray number 11. My mom actually found it at a garage sale. I'd like to sell it for 100. I'd take a minimum of 50. These were very popular right around 1915 and later. This is a period in time when x-rays just came out. People were really beginning to get fascinated with things like this. And remember, they could basically claim anything. So the cooler, weirder your device is, the more it had to work, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Back before we had a Food and Drug Administration, you could make just about any medical claim with a product without any kind of proof. People made all kinds of wacky, weird devices that were supposed to cure every single disease. The theory all behind all that was the body runs on electricity, so therefore if it had more electricity, it would work better. Sounds logical, sort of in a twisted, weird, quackly sign away. <laughs> does it work? It does work. It okay. gives you a little shock. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chum, plug it in. <laughs> Let's try the one that cures baldness. That's just nutty. Hold it. Don't do it, don't do yeah. it. <laughs> it's just weird, man. It, it... Did you shave your arms? Will you please? It's a, we know the- Ow! <laughs> <laughs> this thing's a little scary, but the fact that it actually works is a huge plus. <laughs> <laughs> you better turn that yeah, down. Yeah, let's turn it off, okay. <laughs> People collect old quack medical devices, and this one's so weird, I'm sure it'll sell. So how much did you want for it? I was thinking, I don't really know, maybe like 100? Uh, it's in the ballpark. I'll probably get 150 bucks for it. Um, the thing I hate about these is I don't know if it's gonna sit around for a week or it's gonna sit around for five years. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 75 bucks for it. <laughs> Sure. Right around, chum. Don't let me catch you using this later. This thing is cool and it will definitely sell. But what I really like about it, I can use it to keep Chumley in check if I catch him slacking off. <laughs> what do you have here? I have a, a phrenology head. Okay, it looks like a sculpture of my boss, dude. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> Except he doesn't have a tattooed head. <laughs> I have an antique phrenology head. It could be from 1850, possibly up to World War II. I'm hoping that it's before 1940, because if it's that old, it's probably worth $500. I paid $20 at a garage sale, so I hope to at least, worst case scenario, break even. So what is phrenology? Well, phrenology is a practice that was brought out about 1796, and it was a study of the human brain. They would read the bumps on the human brain to determine personality traits, your thoughts, your emotions, and associate that with the shape of your head. So they could look at the shape of your head sometimes and determine what kind of person you are. So you probably realize I'm a genius. It looks like it. <laughs> so we got some different sections here. Humor. This is a really small section. Yeah. My humor section would probably take up half of my brain. <laughs> I don't know if I buy into this whole phrenology thing, but there could be something to it. And it's kind of freaky how much it looks like Rick, especially the big bald head. So what do you want to do with it? I'm looking to sell it. OK, and how much are you looking to get? Maybe around $500. I don't really know how to tell if it's authentic. Hey, Trav. What's up, brother? Have you seen one of these things before? Ah, uh, phrenology head. I think we've had two or three of these come over the years. He's asking 500 bucks for it, but do you know how to tell if it's real? We need to take the bottom off to be 100% sure. Let me grab a screwdriver. So what are you looking for? Um, we're going to check the logo inside and see who the maker is. See that right there? That's the logo of a, basically a modern company who, who makes them just to resell. OK. Yeah, sorry, That's a brother. shame. No, well, thanks for finding out for me. Thanks, Trav. Yep, no problem, brother. All right, well, dude, I'd still buy it, but for a lot less than 500. Mm, like 450? Take the four off of that. That's a lot less, yeah, than 500. What if we made it an even 100? 50 bucks is, is about what I'm at, man. What would it take to get you to 60? Mm, you know, my boss is really into this kind of stuff. I think I could do 60. 60 bucks. Yep. Deal. Meet me over there at the counter and we'll write it up. All right. 
I invested $20, didn't know exactly what I had, sold it for $60. I'd say that's pretty good. So I'm really excited. I'm walking away with $40 in my pocket. What is that? It's a phrenology head. Chum bought this because I guess it reminds him of you. See this part right here? Love of family? Yeah, that part doesn't exist in your head. It's shaped. It's all flat right there where it should be round. Selfishness right here? You see how perfectly your head moves to that contour? It's like perfect. You're pretty, you are really, really selfish. Hey, this is not even pseudoscience. It has nothing to do with reality whatsoever. You know what? I have a pretty good read of you, Rick. I'm going to go find Antoine. You know, he's your friend. Oh, look. I can see the judgmental bump in your head right there. My head's not lumpy. God, dude. Get over yourself. My head's not lumpy. Hey, how's it going, man? It's going good. Got something interesting for you. It's not a subpoena or something, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, it is not. It's a turn of the century patent medicine calendar. OK. This is deeply weird. It's a very different sort of calendar. OK, can I take it out? Please, handle it. Take a look yes. at it. All right. I've heard of this company. I cannot pronounce this company. It's Greek, Anticamnia. I just don't <laughs> understand why a pharmaceutical company would advertise their products with dead people. Take our medicine, you'll be just like this guy. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell my 1900 Anticamnia calendar. I grabbed this calendar on an online auction because it was just so striking with the images. I'm looking to get $1,400 for this calendar, and hopefully we can get to the bare bones on this deal. This is creepy stuff right here. They used to sell supposedly some special drug that was like really good for you and cured headaches, but it was full of like opium and belladonna. Of course, it's going to cure a headache because you're going to get wasted. You take one of these things. That's uh, right. That's and right. Uh, in 1900, there was companies like this that would just have some fillers and then they would throw a bunch of drugs in it and say, hey, this is all natural. It's good for you. It's not addictive. Like I said, it was just like poison. It was legal to do this until the federal laws came up. The government just came down on all these companies on the handling of food and drugs. I love the art, though. The art's amazing. The um, art is amazing. <laughs> whoa, that is like, <laughs> I mean, that is literally one of the creepiest photos I've ever seen. These are in pretty good shape. How much do you want for this? Well, I'd like to get 1400 bucks. All right. Um, it's really cool and really creepy. I mean, that's sort of like the problem here. You know what I mean? <laughs> If I do buy this, I'll go on the wall, and people go, that's really cool. And then they'll go, but I wouldn't have it in my house. A few years ago, I saw half the calendar go for 500 bucks. So with a full one, I mean, there's a little bit of condition issues on this. I'll give you 900 bucks for it. I could go 1,000. You go 950? It is odd. Very limited market. I gotta frame it. It's gonna cost me a couple hundred bucks. I got one bill after another. I'm, I'm a small businessman in America, all right? Yeah, you're going down to the bone on this one, right? Okay. Nine fifty is a fair price. Yes. Sweet. All right. Um, I will meet you right over there, and we'll do some paperwork. Sounds good. I think I have the material for Stephen King's next novel. <laughs> <laughs>